This is the Bone Collector, Dominic Greeny. You're listening to Wrestling Cheers. Don't turn that dial or I'll choke you out. Taking your way in the world today Takes everything you got Taking a break from all your worries Sure would help a lot Wouldn't you like to get away Sometimes you want to go Where everybody knows your name And they're always glad you came You want to go where you can see That troubles are all the same Troubles are all the same You wanna go where everybody knows your name And welcome back to Wrestling Cheers Where everybody knows your name Especially when we haven't heard from you since, like, April But this is Wrestling Cheers Where we like to talk about things going on in the Northeast Ohio Independent wrestling scene We preview shows, we review shows, and sometimes we even have interviews along the way. This will be a review episode for last Saturday's show from Akron, Ohio by AIW. We have the Rubber City Con, a lot to get into with that show. But before we get into all that, let's get a little bit of housekeeping out of the way. We are brought to you by the Trending Topics Network, NEO Sports Insiders, and Iron Tiger MMA. I am your host, I am Heavy Set, and you can please, 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 please rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, YouTube, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Podbean, WrestlingCheers.Podbean.com. If you want to get a hold of us, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, Facebook.com slash WrestlingCheers, Twitter.com slash WrestlingCheers, and Instagram.com slash WrestlingCheers. Email, if you so choose or desire, WrestlingCheers at gmail.com, and we do have the merch store over at WhatAManeuver.net. It's getting a little bit cold out. Get yourself a Wrestling Cheers hoodie or even a Fight Caden Fight hoodie. Something, you know, two things we have for right now. So please head on over if you if you kind of want to support us. So let's get into the show, the Rubber City Con. And who do we have on the show this week? Well, first off, we have we have Rick. Hey, how are you? How's everybody? It's uh it's it's, it's fun. We had a we had a we had a great weekend. I'm looking forward to getting it into all terrific. To getting into all this, because it wasn't just a show. We had the con. So there's there's just a ton to get into. It was an experience. I will definitely say that. And we have, like I was kind of hinting to in the opening, someone who hasn't been on the show since the review show for the rap show. So we're talking April. Do you want to say it was the end of April? We have Dustin Alberti. I'm back, everybody. It's okay. I know you missed me. And now my voice is here to soothingly tell you about wrestling that happened 45 minutes away from me. Yeah. More like 50 minutes away from me. But yeah. still, how, how my about... soothing, loving voice is here to talk to you, let you know everything's going to be okay. How, how'd that drive feel? Uh, I made Adam drive, so <laughs> it wasn't too much of an issue for me. <laughs> Which something we can we I I want to somewhat get into before we get into all the con stuff because you really have nothing to add about the con stuff. You weren't even planning on coming to this show. You showed up like probably about within an hour before the show started. Uh, we showed up about like six forty five ish. Yeah, we uh I wasn't at the last day. I I wasn't at Zero Cool. Um, and then. I wasn't going to be at Akron because Adam was moving in that day. We didn't know how long things would take, and but we didn't. I didn't go to the con, so like you said, I'm not going to be able to add much to it. Um, we decided around like probably like two or three that we were going to have enough time to get things done, get ready to go, and get down there. So we just said, "Eh, whatever, let's go." So we came down there, and I like I did join the the chat thing that we have now for wrestling cheers that I wasn't a part of. Because I haven't, I've been taking some time off to kind of get my personal life in order, and then like my, I wasn't going to be at Zero Cool, I wasn't going to be in Akron, and then I'm not going to be at Hell on Earth. So I wasn't really planning on being on again until either whatever December show, or even if I waited until the year in review show. But here I am. Yeah, and for the record, you did have an invite to our chat for our, for our Discord channel, but you just slack behind on it that it's something that i didn't push because i was like well i like i gave you the invite and i'm just 
I'm like, he'll eventually get around to it or he'll just say, you'll say, hey, why the hell I haven't been on the show? And I'd be like, oh, because you're not in the chat. Yeah, I, I knew it was mostly because like the not being in the chat thing. I never downloaded the app. You sent me the link and I was like, I'll get to it once like my life settles down a little bit. And it's finally settled down a little bit. And here I am. So let's let's get into the con. We um, Rick, you actually actually before before we get into that, because I was going to mention that you did buy the the mega ticket to get pictures and autograph with people, not necessarily everybody, but there was the select list. Um, we both were there early enough for the tailgate. I wasn't there for the beginning. Like I don't know how much I missed, but uh, a shout out to the tailgate guys. Uh, the, what at ringside guys? I I believe the mixed signal Twitter handle. <laughs> I always for, like forget what's what, but anyway, they uh, had uh, a, a barbecue pulled pork. I know he said he was trying to get certain like barbecue recipes down, and something happened and screwed him up. So he ended up having just regular sweet baby rice. But it was uh, all in all, it was good food. What do you think, Rick? Yeah, I got there around two o'clock. Uh, I did partake in the pork. So, uh, you know, nice job to tailgate ringside, uh, smoking barbecue, whatever, you know, the correct handle is going to be. And, um, uh, you know, little parking lot partook in some uh, some rum filled gummy bears and, uh, you know, just kind of kind of killed the time. It was a little chillier than we wanted it to be. But, you know, what, you can't complain. It's it's almost November and we're. Well, you know what? We hell, we are into November at this point, yeah. and you know, and it was we, November at the show. If we can, if we can, if we can squeeze out another fifty degree day. We're we're pretty happy up here. Yeah, it wasn't hot, and it wasn't really like we weren't out there in winter coats, so I didn't think it was too bad. Though, like on my way out, there was a dude who was just like, "Oh my god, is it always this cold here?" And I'm thinking, "Where the fuck are you from?" <laughs> like. He's like, oh, where I'm from, it's always 80 degrees. And I'm thinking, where the fuck are you from then? And what are you doing up here for a, for the show? <laughs> Did you drive all maybe the way? He was from, uh, maybe he was from Los Angeles, like uh, Kelly Squared. Yeah, I don't know what it was. It was like, how, how this, I'm like, we're in Ohio. You're in the snow belt. Granted, there's no snow, but it still can be colder. We have, you know, Lake Erie just north of us. You know, this whole area can get very, very cold. So yeah, like it's going to be colder than usual. Like I don't, I don't know what this guy was complaining about. It just seems so weird. It's like I don't know if you're in the middle of Texas and all of a sudden someone's just bitching about how hot it is. If you're a Texas native, you'd be like, yeah, this is fucking Texas. What do you, what were you expecting? So we yeah, had weather talk, guys. What's what the weather? The weather talk's great. We uh, we haven't weather done it in a while where we had like weather forecasts about shows. But normally that was when we have to wait outside. That was normally like Music Links and Tequila Jacks, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Because normally you're out there waiting and it's cool to know like, okay, like, are, is it going to be raining? Or is it going to be cold? Is it going to be too hot? Like, what, what, are we, what are we looking at for our, our wait outside? So this, I mean, we, we chose to wait outside for, for this particular show. But yeah, all in all, uh, the tailgate was great. I kind of want to get one together or uh, it's obviously not up to me. If we have one for hell on earth, just like one last one for the year. And I think it would be kind of cool. But granted, like that's a weird day because it being Black Friday and some people have plans before the show, before they, they come out. So we'll see how all that runs down. But we'll have to f ask the tailgate guys whether they're going to be doing it or not. So ball is in their court. Anyway, uh, going into the con, Rick, tell us about your experience with. Uh, like how many people you had and each and every one, like do you want to talk about? Cause I only, I only met one technically two and we'll talk about it, but uh, I'll, I'll, you can have the floor. I think I know the, the couple that you met, but um, you'll, you'll just have to kind of fill me in when we get there. Um, you know, I, I, everybody went into three thirty. I, I buy the front row ticket because I'm a Mark and uh, it's yep. where, it's where I like to be. Um, I did spring for the, the super ticket, uh, whatever he called it, you know, to get everybody the eight by 10, the photo, um, I, you know, I get all the eight by tens for my kid. He's, uh, completely down with that stuff. And it's kind of nice with stuff like that, you know, tugboat and Booker T and, and 
uh, now and not so much Gert, Gertner, but Bob Orton, some of these guys that, that he's never seen before, you know, yeah. a little bit of a frame of reference, something for him to go back and, and look at. And, and now it's, it's so easy with the network and everything to look, to look at those. Um, I popped right into the, to the main room just to take a look. I did not go to the first Akron show. So I really kind of wanted to see what the layout was. I'd heard all these, these great things about the venue, you know, uh, everything from the artwork on the walls to, <laughs> to just, I'm sorry. No, I was I was laughing. I was laughing oh. at the the, the uh, artwork. You were... the artwork on the yeah. walls, and you know the and the photos of the Shriners and everybody there. So I wanted to take a look, and you know, and said said hi to to you know thrift store and so forth. Uh, so I see Bob Orton, you know, just hanging down there by himself. So I stepped on down there to have a discussion with him. I'm used to the meet and greets with AIW. I don't do all of them, but I probably do you know at least one in three. And I find that they're usually, hey, how are you? You know, handshake, grab your picture. Nice to see you. You know, have a good day. So that was kind of the mindset that I was in with this. Yeah. Um, so I go down with uh, with Bob Orton and I'm trying to think what's the least marky thing I can say to somebody. Oh, you know, hey, I, I you're just all oh, your kid as a wrestler, you know, something like that. So I. I go, I, I, you know, I knew he was from St. Louis. I used to live in Missouri. So I said something about Missouri. And at that point, it was like uh, just the floodgates open. And this guy just wanted to talk. And I'm like, it was almost like talking to my grandfather. This guy was just the nicest, you know, most accommodating. He took the picture with me. I, you know, I got the photograph. He, you know, I used to live in a city down that actually was pretty much destroyed by a tornado about five, six years ago. So he was telling me about how he... You know, his, I guess, humanitarian efforts is, makes it sound a little more impressive than it really is. But uh, I enjoyed Orton. I don't think you, you met Orton, did you? No, that, that, I only met the two that I that you okay. probably know about. Well, I, I did Kelly Kelly la, uh, next. And we could, probably just save, uh, we could just, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. We can just save Kelly Kelly for, for maybe a little bit later. Okay. Um, uh, so I hit the room with uh, Tugboat. Booker T and Joel Gertner. Uh, Gertner, Gertner was awesome. It was, you know, quick, hey, how are you? You know, photo, boom, boom. Uh, Booker T was kind of interesting. Uh, you know, he was sitting there watching MMA the whole time. Is that so what he was watching? He was watching MMA because it was the UFC. So about the only thing I could think of to talk to him about, because I just, I'm, I'm not a big, you know, not a big Booker T guy. So I said something to him. I said, uh, I said, what do you what do you think about Miocic? You know, he's from the area and, you know, everybody you talk to up here will be like, oh, yeah, we know that guy from this. And we know that guy from that because, you know, some from the area. So everybody knows him. True and uh, he goes, well, that's kind of bullshit that Lesnar might get a shot before he gets a rematch. And I went, oh, OK, that's <laughs> cool. That was something I didn't think you'd say. So uh, I get the feeling that he's uh He's maybe a little bit more into the UFC MMA scene than I guess I had thought that he was. Um, did you get to meet Booker T? I, you've you've met him before, haven't you? Yeah, I did technically meet him before. If I knew that's what he was watching, yeah, I would have mentioned to him about you know Jessica Evil. I'd just get his opinion on her. But he was watching U- UFC prelims. So I I've been talking about it since they announced it, and I finally got up the courage to say something because I. The one thing about this podcast, I only try to get sound bites and everything from people who are independent wrestlers and mostly ones maybe a little bit more local or I have a good enough personal relationship with them. I've only ever tried to get a sound bite from one bigger name and a literally, which probably I was way out of my league at the time, was my second AIW show back in 2012 and it was Cole Cabana. And he didn't necessarily shoot me down, but he said he wanted money. And I was like, eh, I don't. I didn't have any besides what I had bought merch uh, with. So I backed out and I hadn't, I haven't like asked anybody since then. So I waited until like Booker T had next to no line. Like, I think I am, there ended up being like one person behind me and I was allowed to, you know, just go up. I didn't have to like pay. So I was like, I went up to him like, Hey, can I like trying to like get it out of me? Like how to like, how do I ask this big time wrestler, somebody who's been in WWE and WCW, like, been wrestling probably most of my life, if not all of my life, and say, hey, 
can I get a free soundbite from you? Because I do a podcast that I know everybody has a wrestling podcast, but I do one that kind of pays homage to you because you always had more people in your fave five than five. So I do my fave five questions and we have six. So I actually end up getting it out and he, he did us a soundbite, which you will hear next week. On the podcast, because we will be having an interview with Wes Barkley, originally supposed to be <laughs> recorded on Saturday, but he was so busy with AIW stuff, he was so tied up, and we have rescheduled for this Thursday evening. So when this it'll be the day of that this gets released at night, we're going to uh, record it. We have this whole thing, which I don't know if I've officially mentioned. He's never had Swenson's, and in the Akron area, that's a well-known... Uh, drive-in burger joint. He has reasons why he hasn't had it and why he really wants to try it. So the whole thing we're going to do with the interview, there's going to be two parts. It's all be in the same episode, but the first part, he's going to come in, we're going to talk, a little ice-breaking stuff, and then we'll get into the reason why he's, why he's like this, like his whole backstory on it, and then we're going to go eat, then we're going to come back and record the second half. To get his reaction on what he thought of Swenson's. I know there's people out there that thinks it's it's overrated and all this kind of stuff, but it's he has a reason why he wants to try it. So we're gonna we're gonna have some fun with this. So making that, movies, telling stories. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you'll hear the Booker T soundbite, and it'll, it'll be a staple from now on when we when we go into the Fave Five questions in the interview. Be having me do a little bit more editing than I prefer to do, but. Hey, it's, it's uh, I, I got what I wanted, so I was I was happy about that. I'm happy to hear that you got the soundbite. I was really hoping. So sorry, I, I haven't really been talking. I haven't. I have not much to add <laughs> to this whole conversation because it was not at the con, as we have previously stated. Yeah, no, it's all right. The uh, only other uh, after that, I, I hit, did hit uh, tugboat. I don't know if. Uh, if uh, Mr. Heavy said, if you got to talk to Tugboat, he probably by far was my favorite dude to talk to. Um, I had a little bit, not a good story, but I uh, yeah, I work in a warehouse. I got three, four guys that, that work for me. So whenever somebody just screws something up, you know, I had a couple guys just whack water pipes and stuff with a tow motor. Just just dumb, 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 dumb crap. Um I'm reminded of an old of a Dusty Rhodes interview, and I forget if it was Dusty Rhodes or Cody Rhodes that would say, when the Shockmaster went through the wall and, and fell down, said uh, Dusty Rhodes said that uh, Cody Rhodes turned to him and said, uh, I think that was Uncle Fred. So now when everybody, anybody screws something up at work, you know, smashes into something or, or whatever, which seems like daily uh, where, where I work, <laughs> I, I find myself going, I think that was Uncle Fred. <laughs> so I, I happened to mention that to him, and I didn't even get the words Dusty Rhodes out of my mouth when the rest of them there do it. If you wheel, the whole time we were taking the pictures together, and I have uh, it, the iPhone has that little live uh, thing, you know, where it takes a two, three second video with your post. And the whole time that the, the kid took the three pictures, you can just see his mouth moving, and he's making the head movements. He's doing his, his Dusty Rhodes impression. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is the best i you know i i didn't have any kind of preconceived notion about how tugboat was going to be going in but by far he was my favorite of the you know of the six that that i met like i mean i didn't have much to talk with him about it's more or less as a kid you know especially you know when the run of the natural disasters happened i might have been like five or six and i was just kind of getting into wrestling the lasting memory i have is SummerSlam 92 because I had it on VHS and I watched the shit out of that fucking VHS. So I just love like, you know, the, the face version of the natural disasters. So I even told him like, I want a natural disasters, like pick of me and you. Yeah. I saw the pick and it came out pretty well. <laughs> I liked it. Yeah. The arms folded and the uh, earthquake. Yeah. That's one thing I'll say. Uh, I did notice out of everybody whose pictures I've seen, like people who took pictures of whoever they took pictures of, it seems like uh, Tugboat definitely had like the most, like seemed like he was having the most fun and seemed like he was the most like happy to like meet people and see people, which was kind of cool to see. Yeah, I think that's a perfect, perfect observation. With uh, Gertner was, uh, Gertner was good, but he, you know, he, he did the, he 
he did the you know the kind of sleaze Gertner pose, you know, the tongue out and the the pointing and um, you know, Shark Boy was Shark Boy. He wasn't supposed to be there anyway. I never met him, but I know he's been around the area before. Which, uh, not a lot to talk about with Shark Boy. Which um, we didn't really get a chance to mention for those who didn't know the we had cancellation the day of and unfortunately I guess Gilbert ate some bad seafood or something and was replaced by Shark Boy. And then there was plenty of jokes had that day and I even seen uh, Shane Helms make a comment on Twitter about it. I was like, all right, as long as long as more people are, are in the same boat of thinking ate bad seafood and we replace him with Shark Boy. Okay. Well, it's, it's all the work, baby. It's all the work. Yeah, I'd never I'd never met him before, but he was um well, he was nice enough. I think uh, there was no line. I mean, I probably stood there for five or six minutes and just kind of chit chat with him. And uh, uh, I think by that point, Razor Sharp had moved over there, so they were just just kind of hanging out. Uh, and the only other one that was left was Kelly Kelly, and she she was Kelly Kelly, and so I got that picture. <laughs> nothing, nothing to add about the experience. My my mama, somebody has somebody was doing no negativity November. I'm not sure who that was. Okay. But, um, no, no. Okay. No negativity. <laughs> November is only on social media. <laughs> um, it, I don't know the ins and outs of everything. And I, I really don't care about the business part of the, about the convention. Um, she, she's, I, the first thing I said to her is, as I walked over and I figured once again, back to my Bob Orton, um, how was evolution? Did you have such a good time? I, you know, I wasn't going to ask <laughs> that everybody else was going to ask. So I walked up to her and I said, uh, I know she's West Coast. And I said, uh, she's down there and she's got three coats on. I So I, like a jackass Mark, go, so how are you enjoying the weather here in Cleveland? And she looks at me and she says, I can't wait to get back to Los Angeles. <laughs> I'm like, okay, sounds good. And uh, so we get the picture and I probably, honestly, down there, I talked more with TKD, who was doing the uh the the ticket punching for her than i actually did with her so it was nice to see her and um i'm good yeah i i really wasn't that into her like when they when they announced i'm like oh kelly kelly cool but i, I was never a big kelly kelly fan and i don't think she brought the tramp stamp belt so no i would have if if i was doing people if i was doing the experiences a la carte I probably would have skipped Kelly Kelly, but yeah. since it was, you know, I, I did go ahead and buy the ticket for, for everybody, um, you know, more for Tugboat, Gertner, Booker T, that side of it. Uh, I, I wasn't not going to do it. Um, I don't know. Your individual experiences with Kelly Kelly may vary. Um, I won't say it was a bad experience. It just was an exp It pretty much just was an experience, and that's about as good of a glowing review as I can put on it. How, how many people... Oh, uh, we're on that ticket. It was the uh, the six. So the three in the back room, Booker Gertner and Tugboat, Mr. Boat, and then uh, Kelly Kelly, Bob Orton, and Gilberg, soon to be Shark Boy. So. Okay, then. Uh, <laughs> and then in the terms of Booker T, who was in your fave five, dog? So, uh, so rate the six from one to six. Uh, it, Tugboat was easily. In my book, Tugboat was number one. Um, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm in my forties. So I remember, you know, I remember all the tugboat and earthquake stuff. Uh, Bob Orton was probably number two for me. He just seemed like he enjoyed being there. Uh, you know, he, he mentioned to me that he was like, yeah, I was at the airport at four o'clock this morning. And he just, you know, and then, you know, we'll get to it later. His little bit of involvement in the actual main card. Yeah. Um, you know, after that Gertner and Booker T and shark boy, shark boy. And, um, you know, and that's about it. If you don't have anything nice to say, I want to say something because I looked it up to see if it actually exists and it doesn't exist. You know, how, like the dream match that everybody always wanted to see was Goldberg versus Stone Cold Steve Austin. Can you believe that Goldberg versus Stone Cold Shark Boy has never happened as far as I could tell? Well, maybe we're building for uh, maybe this is going <laughs> to be the start of the feud, Goldberg and Shark Boy. I mean, I feel like that's a money idea. Like, I looked everywhere, and I could not find it anywhere. So I Is could be what? wrong. It might exist. But Gilbert for Stone Cold Shark Boy seems like just the money idea to end all money. Yeah, that would be a, 
That would be an interesting one. So, so Rick, you, you're not going to rate the other three? Oh, uh, after after the top two, Gilberg, uh, uh, Gilberg notwithstanding, because he, he kind of wasn't there, so I kind of <laughs> take Shark Boy out of it. I wasn't expecting. Uh, you know, Booker and Gertner, and then the bringing up the rear, obviously, is Kelly Kelly. No pun intended. <laughs> yeah. I wish there was pun intended. Yeah, for, I really, for, really, for really, sake, there was pun really intended. wish there was pun intended. <laughs> Only if. Only if. But anyway, so yeah, that seemed to be our experiences of the con itself. I think the only other pictures or anything that I ended up getting throughout the, the night was I did get a picture with Faye Jackson. And even, yes, yes. Even though she, well, actually, before I get into the second one, but uh, she actually called me out. Like, I didn't get a picture with her until intermission. And it was like towards the end of intermission. And she's like, You've walked past here like five times. And now you ask for a picture, and I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> I'm like sorry." So then she, I, uh, she called you out on your bull shark, didn't she? Yeah, she did. So I, I got the picture with her, and then she's like, "You better tag me." And I was like, I'm "Thinking, yes, I will." I, yes, ma'am, I will. When I post, I always tag. So even though she wasn't uh, scheduled for a match, and she hasn't wrestled in AIW, but she's been showing up lately, I got a picture with Jinx. I I really enjoy what I've seen from her, and uh, she can be very fun online, too, just being very funny about stuff. Just maybe in my own opinion, like, she did this whole makeup thing where, like, half of her face was in a style of kind of like a Pennywise, and the other half was like a cute, adorable, and I just thought that was kind of funny, because she has that whole horror side of her that I like, so I was like, fuck it. I don't, I'm not at many shows that she's at, so I was like, eh, might as well, she's here, let's get a picture, and I got a soundbite from her for future use on the show because yeah it was perfect perfect time of year for her she she loves the halloween time of year and into the fall she kind of does go crazy on online i think her and ray lynn were doing haunted houses or or things like that i uh i got a picture with allison k as well because i love allison k and um she was over in the corner over by shark boy so it was kind of out of the way but i kind of you know it's more people that were accessible for the con part you know, you had the usual people out, Dominic and PB and, and Swaggle Poo and, and cut out Kevin Nash and so forth. So it was nice. Yeah, I think it, it's crazy about AK because I think me and uh, Dustin, how long we've been around, it seems crazy. Like so many people are like, oh, my God, I finally I finally got to meet um, AK. Sienna. Yeah. Well, it's, I was, I kind of feel the same way. Like you said, like we, she's been around for so long and like, I mean, to think like Hackle bought two dates with her and that was at like the pre, like the fan fast things before j And those were, they only had those, what, the two years that they had them. Three. And those were like j one and two or j two and three or whatever it was. It was j like, one, two and three. One, two, and three all had it. Um, first year was it, it was like an open uh, day yeah. thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then year two they had like different events and like a couple matches. And well, then year three it was basically just like well, two and three a had, couple little like events things. Well, well two and three, uh, two had just Veda, and the third one started to be just Veda, but it was Veda. Then Heidi and then Jacobs. Jeremy Jacobs. And then they also had the uh Tracy Smothers shoot uh interview oh, yeah. in ring during one of those. So yeah, like yeah, like you said, like I I never really I guess because I don't really watch TNA and I haven't really been watching too much even like WWE. I know that she was in the Meon Classic. Like I haven't really realized how big that Allison K has gotten that people are like Oh, I can't wait to meet her because, like, it just seemed like she was literally at like all of these shows when I first started going to AW. That it doesn't seem like it's all that crazy that she's there. Yeah, like, because like me and you, she's been around for like so many years. I'm like, maybe in the past, maybe about three, let's say. Like, she definitely went. She hasn't been around as much, but we were also around during that her lengthy women's title reign. Where I mean, she wasn't at every show, but you know, she was at enough. Yeah, she's she's another one too that and and I think over the last year I've started to realize this a little bit more where she's gotten that exposure. You you know you said TNA, you said uh, May Young. Um, 
where you just never know when it's going to be the last time that you're going to see these people. I mean, uh, you know, case in point, Shayna Baszler is there and then she's not there anymore. You know, Johnny and Candace and Heidi and Crazy Mary and all these people that all of a sudden are just gone because they get snapped up so quickly. Um, you know, just taking advantage if you I don't understand people that won't just say hi to people. Uh, I guess that's just not my makeup. I don't, I don't get it. You know, just go up, say hello. Hey, you know, I appreciate what you do. Um, I can't think of bad experiences I've had with indie talent. Pardon the expression there. I, I just, I can't think of bad experiences I've had with these people. Most of them are, are more than happy to, you know, to say hello and to, they're generally appreciative when you say, Hey, I enjoy what you do. I like when you do this. I like when you do that. You just never know when these people are going to be gone. You know, we, I think we talked about this before when we lauded on MJF and, and, and guys like that. So I don't really need to rehash it, but uh, that's kind of how I feel about it. Yeah. We've taken a lot of time to talk about the con, but you know, that wasn't the only part of the show, which actually there, we do need to mention. There was some like, pre-show matches unfortunately none of us were around for all three the, i only know the first match and the last match the first match was uh Ryder reed versus eric ryan eric ryan won and the third match was brian carson versus big Twan tucker and brian carson won the second match was like a tag team match and i do believe it was between two teams that people like a lot of people didn't know. A lot of people didn't know present company included. Yeah. So it's it's hard to comment on. So even before we get into the card, we do have to talk about what happened before the show started. But after the con, there was the national anthem. It it did happen. We had uh Potato come out with the flag and uh no, no one's singing it. It was just a recording of the national anthem, but it 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 did happen. So, little bit of information I would I don't kind of want to throw out there. I was in the bathroom <laughs> while I was in the bathroom. Weird body was also in the bathroom, so I feel like me and Weird Body were doing our part to protest the injustice in America during the national anthem. Uh, even though I think it was just by coincidence that we were doing it. But that was our that was our way of really sticking it to the man is we were in the bathroom at the same time that the national anthem just so happened to start playing. Were you were you holding holding it for each other? I was I was <laughs> kneeling and peeing into a urinal at the same time. You were kneeling. I was, I was kneeling and peeing into the toilet. Yes, I'm going to say kneeling in the men's room is not something you want to be doing. <laughs> Look, man. You don't know where you are sometimes, and sometimes you got to do what you got to do. I've seen movies. So we actually did get into the card. We do. We actually did have an opening match. Obviously, that was a glory hole joke. Yeah, I know. So uh, we started off with uh, Faye Jackson versus Sienna. That would be the uh, University of Akron alumni Faye Jackson versus the former AIW Women's Champion. Allison K, AK forty seven, AKA Sienna. What did you guys think about this match? I really like everything I've ever seen from Faye Jackson, and obviously Allison K is a pretty uh, top tier women's wrestler. And I think that it, it definitely was one of those matches where you could see that Sienna made Faye step up her game, and she definitely met she definitely met her there, and it was. It was a lot of fun. It was a it was a good solid women's match. It wasn't like it wasn't predicated on comedy, which I think is good because a lot of sometimes women's matches get like predicated on the comedy or sexuality, and I think neither of these matches really got stuck on that. It was just a really good. It was actually just a really good wrestling match with no real like gimmick behind it. It was just two women wrestling extremely well. I mean, Rick. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, I think they made it a point to start start off hot. <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, going out into the crowd, uh, you know, all the way around. Uh, thrift store jobber gets involved for the first time in the evening. Hands Allison K a VHS cassette tape that she proceeds to clock 
Faye Jackson with. So that was uh, something, you know, kind of fun. Uh, after the match, I went and grabbed the VHS tape and I had Faye Jackson sign one side and Allison Kay sign the other side for jobbers. So I don't know if that made it more valuable or less valuable. Uh, so I don't know if I'm in trouble for that or, or whatever. Um, I like both of them. Um, you know, it's, it was a, it was a good women's match. If they're both of those women could be wrestling someplace else, you know, may young, uh, classic with, uh, Allison K. Uh, I feel like Faye Jackson could, you know, could be an impact ring of honor, um, candidate, I guess I'm sitting here watching election coverage. So that word comes to mind, <laughs> um, you know, in the future, uh, nothing bad to say about them. I love both the women. Yeah. Um, Every time I see Faye Jackson, I, I will kind of mention this, is that I always think of Biggins. And it's mainly because there's that picture with Biggins and Faye and what happened at the last GNO that we had, which was Biggins' last show. And I think that picture happened, like, right before I left. So that's something that, that always always comes to mind. And it's really cool to see, you know, how how far Sienna has come, you know, just thinking back to literally the first time I seen her is when she got her nose broken by Mia Yim and how far they've both come. And now, you know, we're here and, you know, Sienna, well, now she's also goes by Sienna, not just Allison Kay, but, you know, she had the run in Impact and now, you know, she's been the May Young Classic. And I really don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that maybe within the next year or so. We see her in WWE, like but outside of the Mae Young Classic, maybe a, a, a contract because I, I don't think it's it's over for her. I think there's more to come. And Faye is, uh, she's, I think she's you know a little bit younger in the in the business, but I, I, I do love what I see, see from her too. And I, I did hear people kind of like complaining about you know they they did the whole you know outside of the ring stuff, the whole hardcore stuff, and it didn't need to be done. Yeah, I, I see, but you know, it, they were using, you know, what they could. And so every match just didn't happen to be in the ring. And there was the moment, which I didn't see until it was on, uh, Twitter or something, a picture, like a part with, uh, Faye Jackson and, and Twan. Something like Twan was in a seat. And I, if, if I don't got this right, like someone please correct me, but, uh, Sienna, I think like Sienna kind of got in his lap and then you had, Faye shaking her ass or something. I don't exactly know, but I, I've seen a picture kind of of it. I'm like, that. I'm like, that's for, for big ton. I'm like, that's pretty fucking cool. Yeah. I missed it. Now, uh, now I'm definitely gonna have to go back and look for it. Somebody uh, Juan was very infatuated with Faye was the, uh, was the, the story going around. Oh yeah. He has a bit of a thing for, Oh the, God. Yes. The rumors. Like, there were a couple times, like, she would post pictures, you know, and, you know, like, sexier looking outfits. And I would, I would took the big Twan, uh, meme that was going around of, you know, shock Twan. And, like, I would just reply with that because I thought it was so funny. But, yeah, um, yeah, I think there's a picture of it of what happened on Twan's Twitter. I'm not a hundred percent sure off the top of my head because, I got uh, the results and everything up, so I'm, I'm going through that. So uh, this match did end with uh, Sienna picking up the vin victory via pinfall. Any additional thoughts, guys? Nope. Love them both. Yeah, like I said, it was a really good match. It was, it was just a solid wrestling match. And I will say the VHS tape that was hit, I don't think we mentioned what it was. It was a VHS copy of the uh, television special the secrets of professional wrestling reveal. Oh, was it now? Now I don't feel too bad about having each of them sign it. Cause I, I grabbed it and I had them each sign it real quick while jobber was up running around doing something. And I'm like, ah, crap. I hope that wasn't like a really valuable <laughs> one that having a couple of signatures on, <laughs> he was going to be like, I was going to sell that for a hundred bucks. Now I can't get, it. so now I don't feel too bad. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think if it was a if it was a valuable VHS, he would have just handed it off to be used in a match. Yeah, but you'd never know about Jabber. That guy's crazy. You want to talk about your shirt that you wore? The, um, we we kind of skimmed I over. Touch, I could touch upon it very quickly. Uh, I did make a shirt that said, uh, I just threw your chair, Jabber 316. Um, I have nothing but love and respect for the thrift store Jabber. Um, we have hashed. 
we have hashed and rehashed and rehashed again his uh, incident at the um, <laughs> at the uh, escape from Cleveland. I believe that was the show, and um, I don't think we need to go too much into it. Uh, that's probably the last thing I will do to poke fun at him. Um, it got a pretty good reception. I got some smiles and some laughs from people, and that's probably about the end of it for me. You know, maybe until the first of the year. All right. Uh, also, you you did somewhat dress up for the show. I uh, I had my Hawaiian shirt and my straw hat, uh, and the plan was if Josh Bishop was able to capture the championship from Tracy, and we could talk about that later, that I was going to pop my straw hat on and my Hawaiian shirt and be ECW front row fan douchebag to make sure that I took credit for his win. <laughs> Isn't That's how it works, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was going to do. So next up we had our, which I think this was the only unannounced match that we got. It was a six-way scramble. We had Donovan Danhausen versus TKD versus Zach Thomas versus Bobby Beverly versus Wheeler Yuta versus making his AIW debut Project Monix, which I've heard about that dude. He's appeared on my suggested Facebook friend list for a while, and someone actually tagged Wrestling Cheers on a post where he said, hey... What wrestling podcast do you want to hear me on? And I believe it was uh, fan Andrew Jones tagged us. My only issue was I'm like, I don't know who this dude is. And I don't know what kind of conversation I will, I will have with him. So I don't. That's one, one thing I'll openly admit with interviews. I don't just try to get anybody. I want to have someone that I'm going to have a good conversation with. And I want it to be outside of the whole. Um, how did you become a wrestler? What were your, what was your favorite wrestling? Like it was like really stereotypical. Which actually, uh, after the show, I got a really good conversation with Chinks. It's like me, her, and Doctor Dan, and she mentioned an analogy that I never thought of. Some interviewers, when it comes to like wrestling podcasts, and they get someone on, they treat it more like a like a business interview, like a work interview, where it's where they're interviewing them for a job like that's not what this is about because if you ask a wrestler how did you get into wrestling odds are that's already been asked a million times okay a little hyperbole but it's been asked a lot on other podcasts so there's there's people who are fans of that wrestler who are listening to your show they already know i've had that with i think a couple wrestlers uh magnum and pb heard them on so many interviews where there was always repeat questions and I'm like, yep, I already know the answer to this question. And yeah, it's exactly what I thought it was because I'd heard it. So yeah, I'm, he seems like a cool dude going back to project Monix. He, he seemed to be a cool dude. I'm not trying to get an interview with him, but if he, he keeps showing around AIW and you know, I get up a conversation with him just regularly, like he, I mean, it's potential. I, I will say not to like correct it, but Ryder Reed was saying it was Pat Monix. Is okay, name. that's that's the Pat, thing. Cause... Project Pat Monix or something along those lines. Yeah, I, Monix I mean, is like the project. I don't know. It's like supposed to be like the gimmick. I don't know. Yeah, something he because like. he shows up on my Facebook friends suge- uh, suggestions, and it's Pat Monix, and his Twitter handle is at Project Monix, and he was announced as Project Monix, but even I thought it was just Pat Monix. So that's good to get some. Uh, clarification that yes, it was Pat Monix. That's one thing I, I like about you know where we are right now with AIW. There's always random debuts and random returns. So you know we had you know Pat Monix on here. And, uh, he's I think he is out of Chicago. So to see him just pop on a show that was cool. He m- might have rode with another wrestler. I think I know who, and I'm not going to get into that. So yeah, uh, what, what did you guys think of not only Pat but Everybody else in this match and this match as a whole will start with Rick. I don't rem- remember a lot of this match. Uh, I'm not sure why I don't remember a lot of this match. Are you drunk? Uh, so maybe Mr. Alberti can f- fill in the uh, tree holes a little bit for me. The one spot that I do remember, um, I like TKD a lot. He yes. threw probably the best kick I have ever seen him throw 
this big roundhouse, and I, I don't remember if he hit Zach Thomas or who he hit, but it was the best looking freaking kick I have seen TKD hit in a long time. Um, you know, he's got that that um, that martial arts kind of gimmick, and I want to see those vicious, vicious you know, looking kicks from him a little more often. So that's about, that's the only thing that really stands out to me from this match. All right. So I haven't been on here in a while, so I haven't really been able to talk about guys like KD or guys like Zach Thomas. Uh, TKD is really coming into his own, which is nice. Like it was kind of awkward at first. And I was like, all right, so I get it. You're a Taekwondo guy. You do kicks and stuff, but like, He's, he seems like he's getting way more comfortable, which is really good. Uh, Zach, as you guys mentioned before, he wrestled in the area a little bit before he was Zach Thomas doing his own thing. Uh, he just has so much intensity and he's so just like at it and like the finish, like obviously he won, uh, like just the intensity he threw like his finisher with and. Just everything he does is so hard hitting and it looks so good and it's so crisp and it's so heavy. Uh, it was, he's just, he, I think he's getting really good really quick. Um, Wheeler Yuta has been at the last few shows. I really like seeing him. He's fun. Uh, Pat Monix did a pretty good job. Who am I missing? Who are the other two people, Justin? Well, I, I want to throw in about Wheeler Yuta. I don't know how many other people join myself and, um, uh, fellow AIW fan Michael. Uh, we were chanting MJF at Wheeler Yuta because last week at the Beyond Show, he dressed up like MJF. And I didn't make this comment online, but it was a comment that I kind of had in my head. And it was just like, this is what happens when you get a, a Chinese knockoff. Because that's what it kind of felt like. No, nothing about, you know, whatever uh, Wheeler Yuta's heritage is, but it's more or less you have original and then you would definitely have a, a copy and i just probably why i never tweeted it out and i was like oh like, i got this joke in my head i'm just gonna leave it at that but we did chant mjf he he came out and uh told us a really quick story about how he just like stole it out of uh mjf's bag and uh what was it he asked him if he goes you know bear balls in there basically and mjf said of course so Fun fact, but uh, the other people, uh, Bobby Beverly and Dan Housen. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, obviously, Bobby Beverly is Bobby Beverly. Uh, you're gonna go to with Bobby Beverly, great wrestler, doesn't get enough credit for being as good as he actually is. I think he thrives in situations like this because he can really, he can really show his veteran skills and really, he can really teach some of these kids a thing or two. I think the thing when it comes up to Bobby Beverly is he's always seemed to have so much potential and there's times that he's railroaded it as far as the stories I've been told. I mean, I love Bobby. Like he's one of those dudes. I see him every show. I, you know, hug him and then like we, you know, we go into some sort of conversation. Like I love the dude, but that's always a complaint that I've heard. And then Dan Housen, like I really like what he does. I like his look. He's a great wrestler. I just, I don't understand because now this is like the third time that Dan Housen has had, has had a singles match, but the other members of the production aren't out there with. Like it just, it just seems disjointed to me. I understand that they had a match later in the night, but like even for Derek not to be out there, it just, it doesn't, it almost makes him seem like a separate entity from the production, which seems counterproductive to how much the production works together and how cohesive they are and, as a package. And he was out with the production as a whole too. Yeah. And that's, and that's usually how it ends up. Like Dan Housen will have a match by himself. And then like when the entire production's out there, he'll be out there. So that'd be a question we'd have to ask the production. Maybe something where we throw it on Twitter if, or if one of them get, gets back to us. So why Dan Housen comes out alone. Is is it something that he prefers? Because I can even see that too. He's the type of guy that he just goes out alone. He, he, I know it's a different company, but he he's he reminds me of the Dead Wrestling Society that was in PWO 
or Prime Wrestling, whatever uh, whatever entity you, you want to refer to it as. Yeah, he definitely has that type of vibe to him. I agree with that completely. Like, if, if there was some sort of storyline where Crimson or this fucking Eric Ryan came back as cursed, you know, I could see the parallels. And I I could see Dan House just kind of wanting to go at certain things alone. But I don't know. We'll, it's a question that we'll have to get answered some other time. And uh, that match, um, Zach Thomas pulled out the victory by pinning TKD. And, you know, these two as a whole re- are really shining from that cl- this uh, most recent class. And I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the, you know, the four. And they all seem to get their moments to shine. And it's cool to see Zach Thomas finally, you know, get his opportunity. And hopefully we see more from that. And, like, even what was already mentioned, I think TKD has, you know, progressed – more and more every single show, and there's obviously still plenty more room to go. Next up, we had Dr. Daniel C. Rockingham and <laughs> Shark Boy. Now, I'll openly admit I'm not as familiar with Shark Boy because a lot of his TNA stuff was not when I was around. I've seen, you know, brief stuff here and there. Uh, I've, I did enjoy this match, but, uh, we're seeing, I think, of a different side of Dr. Dan. Dr. Dan did, you know, win. He uh, got the pinfall. But like, I, I kind of want to go back to the, I think he, he's become, not only a little more intense, but he had moments that I, I we haven't seen from him, if ever. Maybe if, if we have, it's been a while. Well, what were you guys' thoughts on this match, Darth Rick? I, uh, I love Dr. Dan. Uh, I was bored out of my head during this match um i enjoyed meeting shark boy i forgot that i guess i'm not really a big shark boy wrestling fan um you know we got the shark boy biting spots and (laughs) biting the fingers and biting the ass ass of dr dan and you know other than the toilet paper in the beginning and the little bit of Dr. Dan crowd work. I don't remember a whole lot else from this. Um, it just happened. I'm actually sad that Dr. Dan didn't, didn't get more toilet paper that I'll, I'll take partial blame for. I, I probably should have went out and bought some uh, when I went out to target, but uh, we did get some, but I don't, I don't think we got enough. I, I was expecting what, what we were supposed to get at the last Akron show. Cause I think I bought $20 worth. And there was a lot of toilet paper, and it would have been a nice, you know, just like cascade or just shower of toilet paper. And we we didn't get that. So I, I even got a video of it, but I, I didn't post it because I just I'm like, oh, it did not come out as good as I wanted. No, I'm I'm completely into Dr. Dan whipping that stuff back out into the crowd, though. That's that, that's completely w- into that. That's one part of this different side of Dr. Dan, this little bit, little bit more angrier side. And he showed it like, I think later on with, you know, the pamphlet, I think I got a picture or video of just him just going nuts briefly. How about you, Dustin? Uh, I feel like the disrespect for Dr. Dan is getting a bit out of hand. Uh, I also believe that shark boy is definitely not the same shark boy. That was, in the X division in TNA, uh, I think time has kind of caught up with him. Uh, he's not in the same shape he was. He does a lot more of the comedy spots than he did when he was actually like in the X division and doing some of the little more high flying stuff. Uh, the crowd really seemed to like him, which is good. He still has the crowd on him. Just, uh, I, I feel like Gilbert would have been far more of a draw against Dr. Dan than Shark Boy would. And you could feel, I wouldn't necessarily say I was like bored out of my mind from the match like Rick did, but you could definitely tell it was, uh, it wasn't what they wanted to have in that spot. And I think just because of that, it didn't work quite as well as you would hope it would. And I mean, at the end of the, at the end of the match, Dr. Dan wins it, but we still get the, we still get the Shark Boy stunner and it, Crowd goes home happy. Yeah, you got the, and Shark Boy didn't even get there till five thirty, so God only knows how much time those guys even had to try to put something together before being what out third on the card. So, you know, it's probably wasn't a great situation for Doctor Dan there. Uh, you know, 
any way you go at it. And I love Dr. Dan. He's absolutely one of my favorites. So let's, let's get into this next match. And, uh, so, uh, this was the last match before we went into intermission. Was it, was it just me or the first half kind of short? Like, yeah, I felt like it went pretty quick. So I think, you know, for, uh, I think it was only four matches. Yeah. Four matches. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right. We started this off with Jock Sampson, Mance Warner and the Duke versus PB smooth and Hornswoggle. I think when this was announced, you know, it was just hashtag Duke money. So we were thinking Jock and Mance versus twins, both a PME, a PME PB and Hornswoggle. Nope. Turns out it's going to be a three on two. So the Duke was added and uh Hornswoggle. He wanted to even things up. He took the joke right out of my mouth where he mentioned how, you know, you know, it's unfair. It was three on two or maybe, one and a half on three, ha ha ha, which was kind of my thought. Uh, he brought someone out who I, I think he, he did say has has issues also with with the Duke. I wasn't sure what to expect here. We've already seen Thorn. Uh, Cowboy Bob Orton. Cowboy Bob Orton was added to the match. So then the match turned into Mance, Jock, and the Duke versus PB Smooth. Hornswoggle and Bob Orton. Uh, I'll go really quick, get to the, the, the finish before we get into the whole match. Uh, PB, Hornswoggle, and uh, Orton, you know, one by pinfall. Uh, this, this, this was cool. I actually thought it was going to go along the lines of uh, Cowboy Bob Orton heel turn. Like, turns out he was, he was in the Duke's back pocket all along, but no, it was uh, a face. Bob Orton the whole time. What'd you guys think about the addition of Bob Orton and the match start with Rick? Um, loved it. Uh, very happy to, uh, to see the cowboy in the ring. I think he really enjoyed it. I think he got a kick out of, uh, being asked to do it. And, uh, the crowd, the, um, finish of the match, the swoggle hitting Mance with the RKO got, and I think I, I put this up on Twitter, just a giant, pop i i was kind of astounded taken aback almost at the level of pop that that got from the crowd uh there's a great great photo and i and i can't remember who took it but i know it's it's uh uh pat you can at you can call me ron on twitter it's uh it's his guy and and i don't remember the relation the photo of mance taking the rko from or the diamond cutter, as old guys say, from Swoggle with uh, Bob Orton just standing in the background. You know that little nod to to Randy Orton and and uh, I, you know, I don't know how many people in the in the crowd even got that connection. It was kind of a kind of an odd thing, but man, the all I remember about this match is that finish and just how great that pop was. So, uh, Mister Alberti, you can take it from there. Uh, I think the photographer's name was. Was it Todd? Todd Hawkinsmith? Yeah, I'm sure um I'm sure Pat can help us out with that once we uh It's just like as you said that I, I kinda opened up Instagram and there was uh, a picture of Danhausen from the show and I think it was from that wrestler because it wasn't any of the fan photographers that I know. It wasn't Wayne and it might be this dude. at, at uh he'll let us know or I can, we can ask him right now, but uh Dustin, take over. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to say, you said, as us, we like to call it the diamond cutter, uh, as us wrestling purists who know it purely for what it truly is, we know that it was created by the great Johnny Ace, and we actually call it an ace crusher, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, two big things about this match that you guys may or may not know, uh, that's actually the second thing. The first thing I'll say is, I think that the ending would have been a lot funnier if Swaga went for the cutter on, uh, Mance Warner, but like Mance Warner, like kind of like stood up to take it, and like Swaggle couldn't jump up to get it, and then like PV like picked him up, and then they did the cutter. I think that would have been kind of funny. That's just a personal thing on my side. Uh, the thing you guys may not know, Swaggle said that they had another partner who has an issue with the Duke, and it was Cowboy Bob Orton. Uh, what you guys might not know is the issue that Bob Orton actually has with the Duke. Do you guys know what it is? No. No. Duke, the Duke broke, broke Bob Orton's arm 
and that is part of the reason why that <laughs> cast was on there. He broke it one of those times, and that's why the cast stayed on for so long. Fun fact. Uh, it's been in the day. It's been confirmed. Yes, uh, the photographer's name is Todd. It is the the guy that I mentioned. There we go. It's Todd. So everybody knows now it's Todd. This match was a lot of fun. Bob Orton uh, went in there and just went. He I, he did way more than I expect a guy as old as Bob Orton to do, like as old as he is to do. He did fantastic. The match had it had great spots in it. Good comedy spots, good wrestling spots. It was it was a very very good match. It was probably the best match of the first half of the card. Yeah, I can give it that. I can give it that. I oh think, yeah, that match was in the Tokyo Dome. That's a five star call. I think as a whole, the the first half really wasn't bad. Maybe the whole Shark Boy match just wasn't as great. Like I don't remember as much from it either. But I, I still felt it was it was entertaining. But yeah, and I think the other part of it too is, as I'm sure we'll talk about, the second half of the show was just outstandingly stellar, and I think that that kind of plagued the first half of the show because, not that it was like a forgettable first half, but you know, the second half was just so good that it kind of overshadowed anything else that possibly happened before it. So this led us into intermission. So. That leads us to our intermission, and we'll be right back right after these commercials. You wake up every morning, get yourself out of bed, and look in the mirror, and realize that you don't recognize the person looking back at you. You don't feel as whole as you should. You feel about half empty. You get in your car and go about your daily activities, and you think about all the opportunities that you missed. Opportunities you didn't take. Doors you left closed instead of open. You think about all the things that you could have done and the things that you chose to do instead. Well, that's where I come in. My name is Dr. Daniel C. Rockingham, and I am not only a motivational speaker, but I am a personal development coach, and my three principle system has changed the lives of countless people all over the world. I invite all of you to stay with me today and listen as I help you change your lives and give all of you a new beginning. I'm glad to see that no one has left. But now you're asking yourself, Dr. Dan, are you going to tell us what the DCR system is? And I will tell you now. The three simple principles that change everyone's lives. Dedication, confidence, and respect. D, C, and R. If one is dedicated to themselves, confident in oneself, and respectful of oneself, there is nothing that they cannot accomplish. Those three principles are the building blocks of anything you wish to achieve. If you just remember D, C, and R, there is nothing that you cannot accomplish. But sometimes you feel that isn't enough. Sometimes you need to be a little more focused on the task at hand. But don't worry. To go along with dedication, confidence, and respect, you can always remember rule number one. So we come back from intermission, and of course the curtains are closed, but that gives us the production versus the weird world experience. And I had to make sure I got the name right. Weird Body did not like that I called it that last week. But um, yeah, so you know, the curtains open, out comes the production. And uh, something that I didn't note on Twitter, because I think I was, I was getting back to my seat a little bit late and I wanted to uh, get all the tweeting done. We, we had Joel Gertner introduce the weird world experience and after he did he went on stage and uh danced with him that 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 definitely was a treat i think uh, if you had any questions about buying this on mp4 if if this is included then i i'd say that part might be worth it i mean besides every there's much more about this show that's great but that's like a little cherry on top 
Um, what did you guys think about this match and uh, Joel Gertner? Switch it up. Let's start with Dustin. Uh, Joel Gertner is a national treasure, and if he was a member of the Weird World experience every time, I would be completely okay with that. Uh, them getting down on the stage, A+. Plus, uh, him guaranteeing the win, and as always, coming through with his guarantee, A+. Plus. This match... Very good. Uh, the thing that stood out most to me was there's a very big back rake spot. And I talked to Derek about this. I'm almost 100% sure that there should be charges pressed. Because if you watch this back rake spot, Derek gets back raked so hard that even though he's the only person wearing a singlet where his back is covered up, he is in so much pain that it makes him look like the other guys, but it just maybe, like, pricked their finger. It looks like he... Definitely broke a toe, stubbed a toe. He is in so much pain. And I don't know if you saw the picture he posted. Uh, there were definitely marks left. There was definitely blood. And I'm pretty sure at this point he was assaulted. Just putting it out there. Uh, what do you got to add to that, Rick? Well, the back rake, yes. It, everybody knows that when it's done correctly, it is one of the most devastating maneuvers in the game. Um, I was... I love Joel Gertner, but I also remember watching, you know, ECW when it was on, you know, at one o'clock or two o'clock in the morning. I was a always a big Gertner fan. Uh it was a little bit of a bummer when Gertner did the well, well, well at the beginning and it just sounded like crickets in the room because a lot of the folks that were there just did not know who he was. Uh so I was I was kind of a little bummed out by that. Uh, personally, I loved it. Uh, him coming out with the weird world experience was probably the best place for him. Um, uh, I know, uh, Philly, Philly Collins was telling me that, uh, Gertner got a real kick out of the fact that Philly and Marino are from erotic city. He said that, that put a big smile on Joel Gertner's face. Uh, Philly, uh, hit, um, uh, top rope superplex. Uh, I remember that, uh, they hit the mat and it was loud. It was, you know, like a gunshot went off in that place. Uh, the impact on that one. Um, that's about all I remember spot wise from the match. Uh, the, uh, you know, the, the back rakes tremendous. And I, you know, I, I agree with Dustin. That's, uh, there needs to be an investigation. All right. Let's move on to which I didn't, uh, we didn't talk about that. You know, weird world experience did pick up a pinfall victory over the production, but you know, because uh, they weren't on the line, it's not how shit works. Uh, production obviously still your tag team champion, so where where do we go from here when it comes to those tag titles and the other two teams? Multi team match. It's got to be a possibility. Definitely well, multi team yeah. possibility. Well, there's that. I'm still wondering, will we get a five-on-five? Five? Will we add Dan Housen into the match? Maybe, maybe not Hell on Earth. Maybe the last show of the year. Maybe a, a show in 2019. Full five-on-five. Five. I, we... I still think before it's all said and done, the next team to have those tag titles is going to be PME. Uh, I'm not sure where or when or in what format it's going to happen, but I think PME is eventually going to wrestle them away from the production. Anything to add, Dustin? Um, I don't know. We've talked, I, I've heard you guys talking the past few that the AW tag team division is starting to rebuild itself again. And it's really good to see. Um, I'm not sure what's next for the titles. I don't really see the production losing them anytime soon. And I'm not really sure. Like, I guess PME would be like the, most obvious choice to get the titles next or most likely to win the titles next. But who knows what the future actually holds and who's going to, who's going to show up or, I mean, obviously it was going to be our cat in RJ city, but due to some scheduling conflicts that couldn't happen. Who knows? Maybe they could have ended up being the tag team champions. They do have a lot of good chemistry. They are real actors turned wrestlers. Who knows? Their words, not mine. Not judging. 
And we, we don't know if that match is going to still go on, but with a different tag partner. I know at IWC, there was a similar match going on with their tag team champions. Instead of Arquette, they put in Cabana. Like, I don't think we're going to get Cabana, but, you know, could we get some sort of um, understudy for them? I could do a spider Nate Webb. <laughs> that would be interesting. I haven't heard Teenage Dirtbag in like a month and a half. I, I was thinking maybe, <laughs> which is, this is would be crazy. Magic the Production versus RJ City and Colby Red. Yeah, well, there you go. I doubt that'll happen, but I don't know. Just a weird name to throw out there. I can't think of anybody else off the top of my head. I, I just I just hope it's a match that we see. RJ City was at Rubber City Con. I really didn't get a chance to speak to him, but I I really hope he's still going to be a part of Hell on Earth because I've been wanting to see him in AIW for a little while, and I hope we, I really hope we get it. So next match on the the show, we had Matt Justice versus Tim Donst f- for the AIW Intense Championship. Before we get into the, to the end, what did you guys think of this match? Start with Dustin. Uh, it was one of those always good. Uh, Tim Don's, uh slash Matt Justice type matches where it becomes all out chaos and a brawl all over the place. They both are really good at making their matches just fall apart and turn into total chaos. And I think that turned that turned it into exactly what this match was and should have been. And what made it a good match was they both did exactly what it is that they do. And that's like I said. They brawl, they fight, they they do everything they have to to win. They don't mind getting out there and getting messy. They don't mind throwing throwing shit around. They throw caution to the wind. They throw their bodies to the wind. They don't really care. It's uh, just an all out all out chaos. Nothing but fun. Doing what they do for the brand type match. How about you, Rick? Yeah, uh, basically the same thought. You know, Matt jumped off something high um I, I think at one point he was taking tim donst around on a, a push cart and then a thrift store jobber makes his second appearance of the show <laughs> as he hands uh matt justice a plexiglass box with a vince mcmahon beanie baby inside which uh matt justice then bounces off the dome of tim donst uh you know they get back in the ring and then um uh, you can take it from here with the finish, Mr. Heavy Set. So, um, I, I didn't have all this tweeted out, but basically, towards the end of the match, you know, you had uh, Potato get knocked out. Uh, there was no referee. Eventually, Tom Dunn did come out and a uh, little bit more back and forth, but it ended up with Matt Justice pinning Dons to become the new AIW Intense Champion. And of course, as all this is going on, Potato comes to and says, no, 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 he's not the winner. I am the scheduled ref of this match, and I have disqualified Matt Justice. So Tim Donst is still the AIW Intense Champion. And um, it was a really cool swing because you had at one moment you thought like, oh, Donst lost. We don't, we, have, we don't see these short title reigns often. And it was Matt Justice getting the surprise victory to some, becoming the new champion. But, you know, a little bit dusty finish. And Dons wins. Uh, Justice goes to uh, attack attack uh, Dons. Dons goes for the rail, jumps into the crowd. And Matt Justice, he doesn't necessarily make a challenge. He says that he wants Dons at Hell on Earth. Um, did they, what was it mentioned? No DQ, or is it just the fact that it's happening? Yeah, no yeah. DQ, anything goes, no disqualifications, no time limit, no count outs, anything, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I think Which is basically what that match was anyways, because yeah. <laughs> I'm confused by it, but, you know, wrestling. I think, too, it's, it's a, that match was, well, the match that they won, isn't that kind of what used to be the Hell on Earth match? Wasn't there... 
very little rules, or at least the main event was supposed to be like a no rules match. Yeah, sometimes they'd have like a fans bring the weapons type match, or have like a no rules match, or you know, there's some type of stipulation. The my very first AIW show was a Hell on Earth, and the main event was that kind of match. It was Madman Pondo versus Masada. Yeah, that was actually uh, I missed that show, and then I was at Nightmare before Xmas, and then from there I basically went to almost. Well, no, that's not true. I missed a couple shows, and then from JLit that next year, uh, and I missed a handful of shows maybe since. Yeah, like, I don't think I met you till like, 2013, but turned out, like, you had been coming, like, way before me. Yeah, my first show ever was Absolution F, so. Which, even on a side note, um, before you jumped into our server, our chat room, whatever, like, I was the veteran AIW fan. Like, I'm the one that had been around longer. And now that you're in there, it's like, all right, someone else is now the veteran. I'm just... I'm in second place, but I, for, I forget the the time just because I think you've been around a lot more long, a lot longer than me because I was, you know, hell on earth 2011. Yeah, I don't know what year, what Absolution Five that was. Oof, I don't even know. I just look it up. Let's look it up really quick. That's got to be like Absolution. 2009. Uh, that sounds about right. 2009 sounds right. Uh, 2008 or nine. Where's it at? Absolution 5. 10. 2010. 2010. Because I want to say Hell on Earth and Absolution yeah, have the same number, but it's like this year's Hell on Earth is going to be the same number as next year's Absolution. So I think the first one I went to was Ho 7. So that means 2012 was uh, Absolution 7. So Absolution 5 would have been 2010. So, yeah, so you had me about about yes, two thousand ten. You had me a little by a little over a year, but a year and a half. But yeah, you're now the veteran AIW fan, not me. Well, in fairness, too, not that I want to downplay the fact that I've been going longer than you because I have been. But like, I went to Absolution Five, and that was in two thousand ten. I didn't go to a show again until uh, let's see. The next show I went to was TPI Night 1. I knew it. I knew it was going to be TPI. Yeah, which was, I think that might have been like over a year later, or it was almost a year later in 2011. Yeah, that was early, because that was the pre jlet tournament. Yeah, so that was in 2011. And then I didn't go to my next show after that until, um, outside of, actually, that's not true either. Because in 2010, I think it was in 2010, the first time that AIW did Warp Tour. Okay. So 2000, yeah, I was at I was at one of those days, and I watched some shows there. So I guess I guess that was between there too. And then I saw Nightmare Before Xmas, Potato versus Gargano, and then which after I, that was Jay Lit, and then pretty much everything after that. I forget what number that was but nightmare for xmas but that was the last one because the year after that was end of the world and it's been a, just a repeat of different things every year not a repeat of different things but you know it's like it just been this we're gonna do a different type of thing for the end of the year Actually, and we're not gonna call it christmas i think there was one more nightmare for christmas after that because it would have been 2011 no 12 no, no, no you're right and there was 2012 was the end of the world, which was brilliant. The fact that I, it was on the day that the world was supposed to end. Yes. Very smart. I thought that that was a fun show. And also the, the snow was terrible that fucking day. I remember anyway, uh, enough with the past. Let's talk about, well, still the past, but let's talk about this match as we move on to Dominic Greeny. Versus Eddie Kingston, this match did happen. And Eddie Kingston won, uh, won be a pinfall. And he challenged the winner of the main event. More on that later. What how, what did you guys feel about this match? The fact that it actually happened. Start with Dustin. Did you say Eddie Kingston won? Yeah. Did he win? Yeah. Yeah, my bad. I, I didn't mean to. I, I must have missed the end of that match. I don't know how I did. I thought that I won for some reason. 
Yeah, that was the match. Oh, interesting. But uh, it was good from what I remember. I actually, I wasn't paying a ton of attention during this match. Um, I definitely liked a lot of the, a lot of the chain stuff that Don was doing with Eddie. I really like when Eddie works with like an MMA guy because it always he he does really good at feeding. He knows he knows what he's doing because he has a little bit of a training background. I don't know how much you guys know about that, but like he's trained at some really nice, uh, some really good gyms down in Orlando and Disney World. Yes, he, he trains at Disney World. But no, he he's trained at some gyms down in Orlando, and he's he does a very good job of working with guys like that, guys like Trey, guys like uh, guys like Dom. Like I think it was everything was real clean. It was a really good match. Uh, like I said, I I must I don't know how I missed the end of it. I was I was having a conversation, and I must have just kind of lost the concentration on it, but. Yeah, it was, a, it was a pretty good match from what I can remember. How about you, Rick? It was a good match. I can see how you lost concentration. Um, I felt like the crowd wasn't really that into it. Um, not because of the guys in the ring. I just think it was, uh, we had just seen, you know, the, the, you know, Bob Orton before intermission. You just seen the weird world experience. So it was kind of a, you knew this was going to be a mat based, um, more of a you know old school wrestling match. You know, two guys who can who can do it all on the mat, and they had a good match. You know, there was nothing at all wrong with the match, but it wasn't like you know you know this flippy do you know exciting kind of kind of spots. This you know this was a, a wrestling match in the in the in the truest sense of it, and I just felt like maybe everybody in the crowd was not as engaged. Uh, with this as they were with some other ones. So I think one and, thing that happens is sometimes the match before it will take out a lot of energy from the crowd. And, you know, Justice versus Dance was a, no pun intended, a very intense match. And we go into this match, which wasn't going to be, you know, the, the same kind of style. And sometimes I think that is the reaction that you that we get. Well, I thought, and, and maybe, and this is, you know, we were talking about it in our in our seats too. Is the the finish of the match before was kind of a letdown. You know, you have Matt Justice announces the winner, and then Potato pops back up and has to potato things up. You know, with the DQ and everything, so it kind of brings the you know pops the crowd up, and then kind of brings them all the way back down. So then we're starting on that downward slope for the next match. Um, you know, not the high of the title change, which quickly. Uh, devolves into just a, a hate of potato and not just that too i think that at this point too i i mean i wasn't there for the con but it had to have been a pretty long day if you were there for this entire thing and uh i mean i know i was kind of exhausted by the end of the day but and i had only kind of i mean i helped somebody move into my house that day but i mean i was pretty i was even getting kind of tired by the end of the night that's I didn't even stay at the after party all that all that long. I was I was ready to just go home, but uh, I think that I think this I think this match party just kind of been a victim of like what it was and where it was on the card. Yeah, uh, nothing. I got nothing else to add to everything. Let's let's get into this next match because like it's one of those things I forgot that it was on the card, and I was thinking like, all right, you know, after. You know, we get the we intense title match, and then we get this match. I'm like, all right, the title match has got to be next. And I actually think Pedro did at one point. He announced how many matches we had left, and he was off, I believe. I was like, wait a minute. That's one of the reasons why I forgot about this particular match. We had Andrew Everett and DJZ versus Chase Oliver and Trey Lamar. And this match is exactly what you would expect it as. Like, you know, sometimes when I'm sitting here watching these shows and I'm taking some, you know, Instagram story videos for, you know, people to enjoy at home. This is one of those that there's just so much going on. I mean, the grand there, there were other ones, you know, the scramble match was one, the production match was another one. This was just complete utter, um, you know, like you, you have your high flying and everything and just 
a lot of a lot of great shit. What did you guys think about this? Start with Dustin. Uh, it was a real good flippity do match. Um, I was it was it was really good. It was action beginning to end. There was no lull in it. Uh, it did a really good job of bringing the crowd back. Uh, it didn't hurt that I'm pretty sure every single member of Trey Lamar's family and any even relatively close family friend was there. Like there was a lot of a lot of people in the crowd there for Trey and Chase. There were a lot of people in there for Chase too. Um, it was I was happy for Trey, even though I don't know Trey that well. I do know that he wasn't as happy as he could have been with his match against DJ Z at the last Akron show. And this match was above and beyond what you would expect it to be. All four guys, like I said, it was a it was a, such a quick pace. And I think it really woke everybody back up, brought everybody back together. They kind of, it, it was, it was very good. There's not much you can really say besides it was very good. Uh, Trey Lamar almost, he got one of those catch his legs on the, uh, barricade moment that kind of makes you cringe, but he didn't even bat an eye at it. It was a, it was a hell of a match. I, I asked, I asked Trey about that. And I didn't realize this. There was a fan in the front row. I think I know which one it was. Uh, not a not an AIW regular. I think he's more of an Akron-based fan. I think the only time I've ever seen him before was at the last Akron show. But as Trey's in the air, he pushed the guard rail, guard rail forward. Because I, I asked Trey, I'm like, how, I'm like how, after the words, I'm like, how's it feeling and everything? And then he, he kind of mentioned that, like, you know, as he was like mid rotation, he saw the dude like push it forward, and like I, I think that's fucked up. But uh, he, like I said, he wasn't a regular AIW fan, and uh, I don't, I don't, I don't want to like insult the, the guy or anything. But I, it all I say is that it's it's a fucked up move. Guys, got anything you want to add? I well, you what you said and what Trey said is one hundred percent accurate. I was sitting on the end of the row. Um, so I was, you know, sitting in a 90 degree angle to that front rail and I sat while he was in the air. I saw the same thing, you know, just the, the two handed shove of it. Um, so I know exactly who you're talking about and you're absolutely right with your assessment that that's pretty messed up. Um, I was really, really impressed with ZNE. I felt like they were just absolutely flawless. Like everything they did was perfect, just perfectly in sync, perfectly in time. You know, if you're sometimes with matches like this, you're just kind of looking for something that's off or something that's messed up. And there was just nothing to be found. Uh, even with uh, with Chase and Trey as a tag team, they're getting more of a tag team, uh, more of a tag team vibe about them. Sometimes you'll get two guys that'll get put together and they have two singles wrestlers acting in a tag team as opposed to, you know, being a tag team. I feel like, you know, with their more focusing on double team stuff, uh, you know, they're starting to, to dress alike and they're starting to, to gel more as a team. So I'm, I'm looking forward. They're going to, I think they're going to be a mainstay in the tag division for. What if these guys are the ones that beat the production? I'm okay with it. And, uh, post match chase Oliver and Trey Lamar after you know, they, uh, they did pick up the victory via pinfall. Uh, they try to get a handshake from both DJ Z and Andrew Everett. They acted like they were going to accept, but walked right past them. So I don't know. Is there, is there more to come? Because technically, you know, this was like part two in a story that started with, you know, Chase Oliver or not Chase Oliver, Trey Lamar and DJ Z. So we're, are, we're, where are we going from here? Maybe we get all the guys. You know, maybe we end up with a tag team scramble type, you know, the Z and E with uh, Z and E with Chase and Trey, PME in the production. You know, maybe we get a, a four way for the tag titles in the future. I'd be into that. That's a, that's a solid match. There's even a lot of like teams that we don't see as much anymore. Or maybe we do. I mean, they're, you know, they're in other matches, you know, we can't forget about, you know, the fuck it's. We can't forget about, you know, the former AEW Tag Team Champions to Infinity and Beyond. Like, there's, and there's a lot of other dudes. I still want Besties in the World to come back one more time. That was 
one of my favorite surprises of the year because I think mainly because 24 hours prior to that, I was having a conversation with somebody about Davey Vega and I was like, I wish AIW would book him again. And then literally like the next day he's here. So that was the best. I was so excited. Love, love them and love to see them back again. But uh, AIW has just, it's been a completely different landscape over the past couple of years. And especially the past year, there's been just those type of ma- uh, matches and opportunities where, yeah, now we don't announce every single match. So you, you get surprise matches. And sometimes that match that doesn't get announced is going to have a debut of someone we haven't seen yet. And maybe we have a surprise match and there's a uh, return of somebody we haven't seen in a long time. That's kind of one of those reasons why you don't want to miss an AIW show because you don't know what you're going to miss. Anyway, let's get in. To the main event of the evening, Joshua Bishop versus Hot Sauce Tracy Williams for the AIW Absolute Championship. And um, how'd you feel about this main event match? We will start with Rick. Uh, I absolutely loved it. Uh, I think Josh completely stepped his game up. Uh, I know he was nervous, you know, crap in his pants all day long about being in there with Hot Sauce. Um, uh, you know, Tracy Williams is the definition of veteran. So, uh, you know, as far as that goes, I feel like, uh, Josh showed a lot, you know, he had a hundred, probably a hundred people in the old Bishop Brigade. Maybe I'm overshooting it, but, uh, there were quite a few people there to see him, uh, with matches like this. Sometimes you'll get, uh, an overabundance of false finishes and it just, it starts to take something away. Uh, this match had two that I remember, uh, false finishes on both, you know, for, for Bishop with, uh, Tracy getting out, uh, at the last second on both of them. And they both were believable to where you genuinely thought that could have been the end of the match. Um, you know, good, uh, good use of those by those guys, good crowd reaction. Um, you know, I definitely think, uh, you know, I wasn't happy with the outcome. I to see Bishop go over. But then the post match, um, you know, the post match angle made it all make sense, um, you know, and and definitely it, it's nice that we have an organization that worries about continuing storylines. You know, it's not just matches for the sake of matches. So I was uh, I was very happy when it was all said and done. How about you, Dustin? Um, Josh just gets better and better. Uh, he start he looks better and better every time he goes out there. He's getting better and better every time he goes out there. He's showing a lot of uh, a lot of growth every time you see him. Uh, Tracy Williams brought him to his level as much as Josh did step up. I think Tracy did a lot to elevate Josh, and he really turned Josh into a legitimate threat for a title and a legitimate main eventer in that match. Like it was, it was great to see something like that for an AIW student in his hometown against a guy like that who many people consider one of the best if not the best wrestler on the indies right now and it was really cool uh scary moment of the match Tracy William kicked Josh Bishop right in the throat and uh I was like oh that looked gross I don't know if you guys caught it, but it was very gross. So this match ended with Hot Sauce uh, pinning Joshua Bishop. And I kind of thought it was all over, but how come Dominic Greeny attacking Joshua Bishop? And we did have Hot Sauce kind of, you know, run him off a little bit and shook hands with with Josh. I I, I think even before Dom came out, there was, you know, uh, um bit of Tracy Williams putting over Joshua Bishop, which is cool. So talking about, you know, how you know, how hard fought battle that that he had. So so what we have going on to Hell on Earth right now is Eddie Kingston versus Hot Sauce Tracy Williams for the AIW Absolute Championship. And I'm guessing, you know, Dom and Josh. I mean if not this show coming up, this has to be something that we we see more of. Yeah, it's gotta be the gotta be the feud. I think 
it, it's just the next step in Dom beating up trainees and people that he helped train. Any final thoughts uh, on that, Rick? Yeah, you know what? I'm I'm looking forward to both of those matches. So, like I said, the uh, the outcome of the match was not what I was hoping for, but at the same time, the angle made it uh, the angle made it um, worth the time uh, and and definitely worth the uh, energy to me that uh, was expended in uh, watching Mister Bishop take the L. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to that down the line, Tracy and and Eddie. And then maybe the winner of Dominic and uh, Bishop, you know, gets a run at whoever comes out of that uh, that Tracy Eddie match. So you know, we we definitely have a direction we we could be going. Can you imagine Eddie Kingston becoming the absolute champion? I I can imagine it. I mean, you know, I, I, I Eddie's definitely got another run in him. It would be a beautiful thing if Eddie Kingston captured the absolute championship. All right. That's pretty much it. Any, uh, how did you guys feel about this show as a whole from beginning to end? You know, uh, I think we do, we do the letter ratings here. Start with Rick. Uh, to me, it was a solid, a solid, solid show. Hmm. Uh, the whole experience, if you know, if we're going to take the day as a whole, I would probably go uh, maybe an A minus to a B plus kind of uh, kind of rating. I think. Um, I think John uh, learned a lot. I think the uh, you know the organization, if they decide to do this in the future, uh, you know they this was kind of a proof of concept thing to see whether or not this was viable and they could actually do it. Um, I think they succeeded. I think you know he has already talked about you know not even starting the meet and greets till four or five o'clock next year, and then running into uh, into the show. But you know what? It was a solid, solid show. I'd, I'd probably go an A minus. How about you, Dustin? Um, so I can't speak on the whole day. I can speak purely on the show. And I can also kind of base it on how I saw the crowd going through the day. Um, I think that it's like a C plus B minus show. That's not to take it, take away from the show, but like we talked about how the first half wasn't amazing. I think that the Gilbert thing getting canceled and it becoming Shark Boy threw that whole thing off. Allison K versus Faye Jackson was a really good just wrestling match. You had your typical AIW scramble match. Adding Bob Wharton was a really good addition to that last match that made it special. But beside that, there wasn't any great moment before Bob Wharton came out. And I think that kind of hurt the beginning of the show. Coming out of intermission, we had... Um, it was the, now that I'm losing track of my thought, was the eight man tag match. It was a lot of, a lot of energy, a lot of stuff going on. Right out of that, we go into Don's First Justice, a lot of energy, a lot of stuff going on. And then, like I said, the energy kind of died around the Kingston Don match. And I think that the long day kind of, killed the crowd and then the next match picked it up again the main event had to be picked up basically because 58 percent of the crowd was josh bishop fans so they were going to be into it no matter what um i don't think any of the matches were the best matches anybody's ever had i'd say match of the night was probably that tag match with no consequences and z and e um and like I said, C C plus B minus, probably closer to the B minus, just because there weren't any like stinker horrible matches outside of maybe Doctor Dan versus Shark Boy. But as we talked about, there were a lot of extenuating circumstances as to why it wasn't as good as it possibly could have been. A very lengthy review from that one. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> I. It's okay. I break things down. I let people know. It's okay. You haven't been on since April, so there was plenty of time. Um, I think if I were to rate it, uh, I'll, I'll actually do it in separate parts. I'll rate the show probably about a B minus, and then I'd probably give the con about a C minus D plus. Like there was only one person I was actually interested in that I've never met before. 
and the fact that, you know, we had Nash have to get pulled out or he pulled out whatever the fuck it was. And even the rumors beforehand, it was supposed to be the outsiders before that. Like I was hyped for the outsiders as a whole, but you take away Scott Hall. I'm like, fuck it. I've never met Kevin Nash. I really want to meet Kevin Nash. So let's let, let I'm still in on this, but taking him out and putting in Booker T who I already met. And the only real name that I was like, Ooh, I, I really want to see this person is, you know, tugboat typhoon Shockmaster. That was it. I had no interest in Kelly Kelly, no real interest in Bob Orton. Um, no interest really in Joel Gertner. So yeah, that, that part kind of sucked. Um, but it was kind of cool that there was plenty of time. I didn't feel like I had to really rush to the venue. I still, you know, tried to get in as quick as I could to, you know, put my spot down of where I wanted to be. But, you know, that that was that. And there was still, pl- like I said, plenty of breathing room. So, you know, that's why, like, a lot of people left. You know, wasn't really mentioned. You know, Rick had min- missed the middle part. And, and then I missed the middle part too. Uh, we both went separate ways, but still some people left and came back. Um, the show though, I didn't think was that bad. Uh, I don't know how it would rank to the, the first one. I think the first one might've been better. I think maybe just how things worked out that time of the year, AW put on a little bit better card for Akron this time. It, it didn't, it, it fell a little short than that. But I felt like uh, Bishop and Williams was a great match. And I felt like Donst and, you know, Justice was a great match. And the, the one thing I didn't like about the first half probably was the Dr. Dan Sharkboy match. It had nothing to do with Dr. Dan. It was a little bit more Sharkboy, but I still think it was a very, very enjoyable show. And then, of course, being so close to home, that that helped it out for me. So, yeah, I give it a, like I said, about a, say about a B, B minus. So, um. Yeah, that will do it for us here. Uh, any final thoughts or last minute plugs before we go, Rick? Nope, it's always a pleasure to be here. Uh, I am on the Twitter machine. Um, that's about all I do. I'm I'm pretty boring. How about you, Dustin? Uh, you can follow me on Instagram. You can follow me on Twitter at Rev Tintin. Uh. I'm uh, single now, as Steve Guy let everybody know, and escaped from Cleveland. And uh, the DMs are open, ladies, as Steve Guy said. That's a joke. I don't really care if you DM me or not. Um, but yeah, just find me on those things. I'll be on this again more often again. Be norm- Become a normal guest again. That's all I really got. Live my life. And, of course, you can find myself at HeavySet330 on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can find, like Just like you can find this show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, Facebook.com slash Wrestling Cheers, Twitter.com slash Wrestling Cheers, and Instagram.com slash Wrestling Cheers. we got an email, Wrestling Cheers at gmail.com, if you so choose a desire. And we got the merch store over at whatamaneuver.net. And once again, please rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, YouTube, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Podbean, WrestlingCheers.Podbean.com, and check out all the other shows on the Trading Topics Network, such as All Beer Inside, Eurovision Showcase, and Chill, and Old School at the Movies. And check out our some of our podcast friends, like Pod Van Dam, Benefits of Podcasting, Center Stage, Super Fantastic Podcast, The Road Home from Wrestling, Kick Out a Two, the IndieCast, SoBros Network, and the Big Gold Bell Podcast. Check out our other non-podcasting friends, such as Thrift Store Jobber, Rebel Life Media, The Savage Stass, Set Tab Photo, Ringside Shots Photography, Sickening Pictures, NEO Sports Insiders, Iron Tiger MMA, and the official graphic designer of Wrestling Cheers, Moy Boy Designs. That will do it for us here on Wrestling Cheers, where everybody knows your name. Unless you're the person who pushed the guardrail forward, then we don't really know who you are. But we know your face. Later. Making your way in the world today takes everything you got. 
Taking a break from all your worries Sure would help a lot